wanted to share a little something with you guys as like a bit of a mini uh, vloggy kind of episode. So I have the week off. Just grab a couple of bits. I have a week off now um, over Easter, which is really nice. Um, things got a little bit stressful before finishing, so um, I'm sure everybody else has probably had similar situations where they've had to take um, wage cuts um, and such. It's not very nice. Um, so I really am like now appreciating a little bit of time for myself. So I'm glad I already booked this. Um, so I've been getting trying to get back into some of my making, um, which I haven't done a lot of over the past few months, ever since I had that work that I needed to do for work to help out and work kind of monopolised for a while and yeah, now I'm trying to get back into my own projects. So I don't know if any of you guys remember these, I started these a couple of years ago, I kind of classed these as my uh, Grinchy Christmas socks. I think they're a zigzag sock yarn and I think the colourway was something like summer something or other and I was like this does not remind me of summer at all. But I um, I basically took a crochet sock class um, at my local yarn shop a while back and we were doing it from a pattern and then any guidance that we needed we could ask while we were there. Um, so I started this and, and now I'm on the cuff of the second one and I realised that I've made, I've made a mistake in my first one that I didn't know any better when I started making it so I'll show you the cuff in my first one when you join, because it's done sideways, your rib's done sideways, row for row, all the way around, and then you join it together, and I have this weird bulky seam that you can see kind of sits funny. So basically you crochet the two pieces together, and I thought surely this needs to be more seamless than this and I don't know if anybody else knew any different at the time but now I'm looking at it at the time I thought it looked weird like why would you want a seam at the side of your sock it looks terrible <laughs> um, doing it a second time many years later and it looks almost seamless. So this seam here, this crocheted edge, kind of matches these ridges when you look at it like that. So you crochet them together and it gives you a crocheted uh, chain where it kind of looks uniform with the rest of these rib, these are meant to be rib stitches, these rib row, these uh, rows that stand out. And you can see how this matches this. It looks loads neater. So now I'm like, do I, because this, this isn't how this looks. Basically I pinched the two fabrics together and just crocheted into them because that's all it said to do. It didn't give you any real direction. But that, against that, I mean, which one's the winner, really? <laughs> this one, by far. So I think because you you finish your row, your row up here, and then you crochet down and then continue around. So I'm wondering if I could find the yarn, like if I could separate the two like there, snip one of these threads and then I could sew the end in up here and down here and then crochet them back together how they should look. I'm trying to think of a fix because I can't, now I know how it should be done, I can't live with this. 
So basically you have a row of chains at the top of your work um, and then you have is it this side yeah because this is your chained on edge at the bottom you're meant to go into these little loops here and now I know that so you go through your chain on the top of your work and through these little this tiny little loop on the bottom edge it's just one like one loop one singular loop in each stitch and you you get one of those and you do you chain them together you work them together creates this beautifulness <laughs> so you can still see that it's a seam but it lays flatter and neat and it looks uniform with the rest of the stitch pattern i've got my little avocado Stitch marker by Hannah of the uh, Corner of Craft. Um, and then my project bag is one that Twee made me, which is my Star Wars Valentine's bag, which I love. Um, so that's what I'm intending to do. I think today is to fix this one because that's going to ultimately bother me. Um, and then once I've fixed that, I'll carry on. With the second one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's underway. I also have, oh, I didn't bring it in with me. I can share that another time though and add it on the end of this video. So yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, so I wanted to share with you how I fixed my crochet socks or how I'm going to fix my crochet socks. Um, this one, if you remember, I shared with you how I joined it and how it looked and matched a lot neater, um, which is here, this pink row. Um, and I wanted to share with you how I'm going to do that on my other sock. So as you can see, this is my other crochet sock. This is the first one that I made and I made a really huge mistake on it. So what I went ahead and did was I snipped the uh, joining stitching in the middle. So I have now an end at each end that I can sew in. Um, so that's available so that I, you know, can keep the actual stitch, the rest of the uh, crochet and stitching together. Um, I can just sew these ends in without, uh, without anything unravelling. So... Um, and I'm just going to show you how I intend on fixing this. So I just need to wind some yarn off to get to the to some green um, because unfortunately that's what I've used. <laughs> this green section and this is what I'm going to use to crochet sorry this is the only method I've got propping up at the moment my camera could do with a um, tripod so what I'm going to do is on the other sock I basically just took it in I took it in too far I think I took it in about here um, and that left like this bump bumped edge uh, stuck up so what I am going to do is I'm going to go through the top chain stitch on one side and go through, you can see this little loop on your chain on edge. I'm hoping you can see that. There we go. And that's what I'm going to be picking up through, which I didn't do on my first attempt. And this creates um, or mimics the same detail. Mm -hmm. This is the hook that I did the actual cuff in, so that will probably help. So we go through the chain and the loop edge. And we bring our yarn into play. And we bring it through both of the loops. 
Then we go through the chain edge of one side and the loop on the other and bring our yarn over and we bring it through both of the um, two stitches and then we yarn over and bring it through the two stitches again to make our chained edge and we repeat that so we're going through the we're going through the chain the two tops loops and the one on the other side we're going over and we're bringing it through again and then yarn over the around the hook and through again and there you see I've got my chain edging happening which replicates what's going on it'll create like a ridge like the other ridges so I'm just going to carry on doing that to the end sock on my second sock sorry but only because I think I'd added an extra row in and it meant that they were the um, crochet chain that I was doing actually um, continued down in the same manner as these ones so it matched if you look matched the same direction so it looks really neat and I think this one has maybe a row, a row less, so it's not quite in the same position, if you can see that this is actually the opposite way around to this. But it still has a better ridge than where it had before, so I'm really impressed with that, because it looks a lot neater and it's not stood out as much. You can see that it stands out a little bit, but not nearly as much and as crooked as it did before. So that's one fix and I'll just so I'll just tie in the um I'll just tie in these ends and I'll just sew them in on the wrong side. That's that. So one other thing that I wanted to talk about with these socks, which was really annoying, was that I did most of the leg of this yesterday, so it matched the other leg. And you can see that I've got quite far down. Um, but I've had to pull back this much and the, a portion of the heel um, as it wasn't wide enough <laughs> and I couldn't get my uh, I couldn't get my foot in but this measure, measures perfectly the same as the previous sock and matches and when I measured this portion of the sock it was about a half a centimeter each side smaller so it like tapered in quite a bit I couldn't get my foot in it so we're going to continue today um, watch a podcast and hopefully get that finished. So I just kind of wanted to check in with you guys and thought it'd be really nice um, to do so, but I haven't really done that much this week. Um, I kind of finished doing some work, um, started my Easter holiday a day earlier 
um, but I haven't really accomplished too much crafting wise. I'm working on a new hat design um, and I kind of have some plans to work on that a little bit more. Um, it's not a difficult pattern, I'm looking forward to doing it. Um, I've got the ribbing of the hat done, so it's now the more fun section. Make me a nice coffee. That is going to make me go very soon. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, haven't really got anything else in the works really. And I kind of have settled on a possible sweater pattern, but I want to get a few of my own ideas moving first. So we'll see if I settle. We'll see if we settle on to doing some of my own things and something else. But I kind of feel like I should get some old projects out of the way. I don't really like them lingering too long, and if I want to do some of my own designs as well as knitting some things that I've seen that I like the look of, then I really should finish some old whips. Let's see what's happening. Um, what are you guys doing? I hope you're enjoying your Easter, by the way. Happy Easter, everyone. Um, I hope the holidays are really nice for you guys. And I know that it's been a little bit of a strange time for a lot of people, but um, I've been kind of embracing it as like a reminding me that there is a lot of things that I can do at home and I don't need to be going out. It's like reminded me that I don't need to be going out all the time, which kind of got in the habit of. Um, and now that I've found some new nice coffee to make, there is no need for me to be uh, wandering too far. <laughs> I've got all my coffee needs at home these days. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's kind of been reminding me that there isn't really much of a need to be going and venturing. So I've been time, kind of making the most of some of my time at home. So this afternoon I actually read for about four hours, um, with like food breaks and coffee breaks. So that was been really nice. So now the rest of my evening, my afternoon and evening will be pot making, um, which is a good priority. <laughs> So yeah, I spent about four hours reading The uh, Crescent City um, by um, Sarah J Maas. I don't know what everybody thinks of that book, what are you thinking about it? I know that some of you have been reading it, and I know a lot of people really loved um, A Court of Thorns and Roses, which I love. I've not read the, um, <laughs> the first series that she wrote, um, Throne of Glass, I haven't read that yet. That's on my agenda. But since I did read A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I know that that series is still like continuing. But what do you think about this book? Do you like it? Kind of like it. Kind of feel like it reminds me of things that have already been done a little. The, um, the characters starting to get where I'm kind of getting to know them a bit more. Not sure I'm committed to them just yet. Like, I'm about, I think I read, I read about 80 pages today, so I'm about 300 pages in, um, which isn't, I haven't got really far with the amount of time that I've had the book. So I bought the book when it first came out at the beginning of March, and I still feel like I am, like, not slogging through it, but I've not had the, um, the excitement and impetus to like pick it up more because I've been really enjoying it. It's just kind of been a bit of a pick it up here and there when I fancy it. It's not like a caught on some roses, like I had to pick it up. Like, oh, I need my reading time. Like I was desperate to have it in my hands. Um, not there yet with this one. So let me know what you think. Like, are you really enjoying it? Have you read all of it yet if you have no spoilers <laughs> um but yeah what 
what are your views so far? Do you think that it's better than the other ones? Or do you think that it's lacking something? Um, let me know. It'd be nice to hear your thoughts. Um, yeah, so I'm going to crochet, maybe work a bit more on my blanket and watch a little bit more of Sunday pass me by. So I'll probably post this little vloggy video up on my YouTube channel for you to check out. Oh, and um, if you haven't already known, I have a new sock pattern out this weekend, uh, which is called Soul Attraction, and it is a colour work design. And the leg is basically colour work and the foot of the sock is a stocking stitch um, sole, but the upper portion of the foot is a 3x3 three three rib. It's got a 2x2 two two rib cuff with a lateral braid that divides the colour work from the, from the cuff. Um, I'm really excited that I finally have it out because it was a design that I started, I started knitting and writing in, I think it was October 2018, which was only about a month before my mum's return of her um, cancer. So it was a bit of a hard time and in the end it literally, it got tested and then it sat because I just, I didn't have the, um, the mental or brain power or just the, I didn't have the feeling of commitment to be able to continue working on it. But I have sat on it for so long and kind of felt a little bit unsure of whether to put myself out there again. And it felt really like, I don't know, you know, like sometimes you feel like these things just kind of overwhelm you a little bit. Um, whether people are like seeing it, whether the people, people would be like excited as you are. And then I realised that actually it doesn't matter if everybody else is excited about my things or not as long as I am and I'm really happy with the design I really love it I think it's really great I worked really hard on it um, and I think that yeah I think I need to do my designing for me and then if everybody else is on board and supporting me then that is really fabulous and thank you to those who already have that was really kind of you um, yeah, so I have actually put a little uh, coupon code in my Ravelry group for my followers. So I will also bob that down here and that's until the end of Monday. Um, I will in future also um, produce a discount code that is particularly for followers and that will have a slightly higher percentage as a thank you very much. Um, but I will always put that either in my videos or in my Ravelry group as um, a place to check for those. So uh, the discount for that will be a 25%. Um, the one that I share via YouTube will be, uh, Instagram, will be slightly lower. Um, not Instagram. The one that I share via my general pattern page will be slightly lower. Um, It'll be like an introductory code, but for my followers, I'll give a little bit extra. So, um, but I'll put that down in the little drop box. So please check there. And thank you so much to those who have already supported and checked out my pattern, liked, shared, and all that jazz. Uh, it's been really helpful. And thank you so much for being as um, excited and happy about that. So, I'm going to stop gushing. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful Easter weekend and yeah, continue crafting and I shall see you again soon. Bye!